Toastmasters itself has been an important, I mean, it's helped me learn to speak. That's what it's for, is to help you learn to speak publicly, and it has helped me. Toastmasters International is a worldwide organization that teaches public speaking through a network of clubs. I quit my Toastmasters club during the pandemic so I could focus on finishing my films and writing my memoir, which I did. About a month ago, I tried to rejoin Toastmasters and I was not allowed to do so. I want to let people see me processing it because I kind of don't want to do it twice or I mean okay. I I was gonna just go on and talk about it and I thought no I need help with this so um I've I've emailed the person who told me that they won't accept my payment they won't let me be a member mm -hmm. and um I think what really hurt was she at first acted, it seemed like she was trying to say that she was, I mean, she was speaking for Toastmasters at large. She wrote that what I said was not appropriate for a general purpose audience. I emphasize it in general, basic Toastmasters clubs are general purpose audiences not suited for specific topics such as yours. I've got it worked out. I'm not going to be in the club anymore. And I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, but it hurt like this young part of me, you know, it hurt like the little girl who was told not to ever tell. And, right. and that's, I mean, that's really deep. Now, is it true that Toastmasters, when you say Toastmasters doesn't want me, is it that they said that the content that you want to speak about isn't going to be welcomed or appropriate for the Toastmasters at large? And you had an option to say, okay, I will, I won't talk about that, but you didn't want that because you don't want to have to have that be a restrictive element yeah if i if i allow myself to be silenced in one situation i'm not going to be strong enough to do what i'm doing and what i meant right. to do and right. so it's um, your choice it, oh yeah it's it's yeah. my choice it's my choice but i don't know that it's i mean that's what it is it's, it's my choice i'm fine with that as an adult uh-huh it's that little girl part of me that is like feeling shame. Right, exactly. That's really what it is. It's feeling shame. Right. I must be bad because I can't speak about this. Me. I can't speak about my story. So yeah. I must be bad. Or also she's she keeps saying, oh, there's a threshold there and you've just worn us down and you know, it's, it's like, um, so that's what the Toastmasters person said, making you wrong or bad. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Prior to the pandemic, while I was still in Toastmasters, I won a speech contest with a speech in which I disclose I am a survivor of child sex trafficking. I won the club contest and then I went on to the next level. And at that point, everyone was super super supportive of me. I paid someone to coach me. She has an organization where she teaches, where she coaches children mm -hmm. and adults in, in public speaking. She had won her club contest. She had won at seven levels and she was on to the semifinals in Toastmasters, which put her, I think she said at the top 98 people in the world wow. for the Toastmasters contest. And mm -hmm. she started out as a top like 350,000 or something, which is where I was when I won my first one. So she made it a long ways. And yet the people in Toastmasters, and it was some of the, cause I was kicked out where I was told I, I, I couldn't 
speak about what I wanted to and I was trying to be silenced in in another club and mm -hmm. so the people from that club were the people who had just convinced her I mean just well, really worn her down to where she changed her speech completely when she went to semifinals and um she lost she didn't even play at semifinals mm. And who knows what would have happened if she'd given her speech, which was about sibling incest. There were five, maybe 10 people in all of Toastmasters, this is a big group, who wanted to silence me. This morning I was, I put it together that like, they're saying they were so hurt by things I said, but it was my abusers who did those things. Mm -hmm. it, it, I right. didn't. I wasn't an abuser and right. another thing that helped me putting it together is one of the people who complained about my speeches. Mm -hmm. I know for a fact, she was one of the ones who did. And she, t I, she talked to me at one point about childhood experience of her father French kissing her when she was mm. like 12 years old. He, he said, she says he did it just to irritate her mother or oh my gosh. With his ex-wife, mm -hmm. but they had a super long kissing session at drop off, you know, when she, when he was dropping her off and mm -hmm. he would say he kissed her like adults kiss. And that wasn't the only time he did it. It wasn't only in front of her mother from what I understand. But she yeah. said it wasn't sexual abuse. I want to make it clear to everyone who views this that if an adult kisses a child inappropriately, that is sexual abuse. It is a crime. It's wrong. My fellow Toastmasters who disclosed to me didn't interpret it as abuse, but it is. After telling me this, she made speeches glorifying her father. She mentions her father in speeches, multiple speeches, and and she includes like details like how good looking he was and how he wore his hair. And I tell you, that was triggering for me. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It I was just sickening to me. Oh. And um But she wasn't silenced. No, because I, I kept her confidentiality. I, I didn't tell anyone what she had told me. There, there was also someone who was a ritual abuse survivor. And he didn't tell anyone else that. But he talked to me after meetings. And, and I would send him my speech sometimes before meetings. And, you know, that was someone in the group. So... Yeah, there there were people there were people apparently who really didn't like what I said, but there were also people who really, really did like what I said. Very good. Yes, exactly. That helped to say, yes. Yeah. Do you have ideas? It just feels like my little girl self is still really hurt about this. And it's not yeah. it's not my logical self, but ideas on how to help that. What would you like to say to her? Oh. That's a good question. I would say you did nothing wrong. I'm proud of you for surviving. I'm proud of you for wanting to speak out because otherwise I wouldn't be doing this. Otherwise people, all these people that I'm helping wouldn't be helped unless that little girl part of me was willing to and the most important thing to say to to your little girl and to any little kid who's experiencing abuse is to keep on telling, keep on telling people until you get heard and then keep on telling people. Remember, you've said that. I've heard you say that. Yeah, I do. I tell children to keep on telling people. So, yep. That's my child self. That's right. I couldn't. Yeah. It's like I could, if I silenced myself, I wouldn't be a good, yeah. 
I wouldn't be able to do what work I'm doing. So you want to tell your little self to keep on talking, to keep on sharing, to keep on expressing that voice. I love that. That makes, I can see this, you know, I, I can see a smile on her face <laughs> as we were talking. I, I mean, I can see her being happy now. 